General Science, Standard 6, Chapter 3, Diversity in Living Things and Their Classification. Let us continue with the classification of animals. Try this. Take a drop of water from a puddle and place it on a glass slide. Observe it under a microscope. What do you see? When a drop of water from a puddle is seen under a microscope, innumerable microbes can be seen moving about in it. You will see the continuously moving amoeba, the paramecium is also a unicellular animal like the amoeba. A horse, a bear, a tortoise are multicellular animals. Can you tell what is the chain of bones in the center of our back called? Yes, it is vertebral column. Animals with a vertebral column and those without it form two groups known as the vertebrates and invertebrates respectively. Snakes, birds, fish and kangaroos as also humans are vertebrate animals. Animals such as snails, cockroaches, earthworms do not have a vertebral column and therefore they are invertebrate animals. Name some animals which lay eggs and others which give birth to their young ones. We have learnt that producing another living thing like oneself is called reproduction. A hen lays eggs and hatches them. After a few days, the young chicks hatch out of the eggs. A cow gives birth to a calf. Before that, the calf grows within the cow's body. According to the mode of reproduction, animals are classified into two types, namely oviparous animals which lay eggs and viviparous animals which give birth to their young ones. According to their habitat, animals are usually classified into terrestrial and aquatic animals. However, animals like a frog, salamander, toad live in both places, namely land and water. Therefore, they are called amphibious animals. A kite, an eagle, a crow, a butterfly, a honeybee, all fly in the air, though they live in different places. These animals are said to have an aerial mode of life. Always remember, in the living world, a lot of diversity is seen, both in animals and plants. Every plant and animal is unique. We should all make efforts to conserve this diversity in the living world. We have learnt plants are classified on the basis of their height and the shape of stems, period of life cycle and habitat. Animals are classified on the basis of the cell structure vertebral column, method of reproduction and habitat.